Hey guys, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. It's been a relatively hot day once again for a lot of us. For some of us out in the southeast, it's been a little bit better. We've had a little bit of a cool down. Some clouds have rolled in and helped keep those temperatures down just a little bit. Even some of us might have gotten a little bit of rain last night and are currently getting some right now at the time of making this video. But the reason we're making this video is because of this next set of days here with the potential for up to a slight risk or higher of severe weather we did talk about this enhanced risk already not much has really changed with it tornado threat remains at five percent over towards montana north south dakota and also parts of nebraska here damaging winds are going to be the main story for tonight from the looks of it we're expecting potential for up to 80 mile per hour gusts across this region as a line of storms develops later in the evening and then also, of course, the hail threat is something to talk about over towards this region. Usually some big hailstones, when any records that we've had in previous time, have often been over here towards this region. So I, my interest is slightly peaked in this as well. But I'm really thinking damaging winds are going to be the main threat tonight. But moving along, though, we'll talk about tomorrow's threat as well. Pretty broad, slight risk. Maybe a chance for an upgrade. I'll have to look a little bit further into that as we go. But one thing I can say, though, is there is a 5% tornado threat that includes the Kansas City metro and areas off to the west and also adjacent areas that are off to the north here as well. Lincoln, Nebraska, you're still in that 2% area, but if you're over towards northwestern parts of Missouri, southeastern parts of Nebraska and parts of southwestern Iowa, you need to be on the lookout because there might be an increased chance of a tornado or two developing. As we go forward as well, main threats are going to be once again damaging winds and hail. A little bit more equal on the two threats. I'm still thinking damaging winds will end up being the main topic, especially as the storms evolve throughout the day. So we go towards day three. We then start to look towards the northeast. So Saturday, if you're over towards the Ohio Valley, if you're starting to sneak into the northeast here towards Pittsburgh, might be watching you for severe weather. I'm thinking the threat really starts to become more favorable for damaging winds as we go forward. And from that point, we're heading back out to the Western High Plains again. North Dakota and Montana look like they're going to be in the mix once more. And then we'll see that threat shift a little bit off to the South and East. South Dakota and Nebraska coming back into play once again. Day six through eight, of course, are still predictability too low. So just showing signs of the active pattern that we have been talking about or we've been anticipating coming in. Looks like it has done just that. And a big part of why we have a more stout severe weather setup today is because this very powerful low pressure area here, in the upper levels of the atmosphere, it's coming into play and it's going to make for a very favorable setup for severe weather today. And that's going to persist into the following day. Once that low finally starts to weaken, the threat does drop off just slightly. For, and of course, like we mentioned before, this is really going to be more so towards Ohio, Pennsylvania. And then from that point, we'll watch that storm system roll its way out of here. And then we'll kind of be back to a setup that was very reminiscent to what we saw, let's say, towards the early part of this month as we start out the month of July. So we'll end up seeing the that be the case as we continue to go forward here and then as we continue to move on here it's going to be system after system just like this one all while in the meanwhile we have to take a look at what's going on further off to the south here you can see these ridges coming into play so fortunately with me seeing this not going to be much of a way in relief in regards to the heat for a little bit here this is going to be a very heat dominated pattern for the southern part of the U.S. as a whole, whether you're to the southwest, southeast or deep south over here. It does look like the heat will be persistent as we continue to go forward. And this is going to become even more dangerous, possibly, as we start to go past the Fourth of July holiday here. I do think also that Canada might need to be watched for setups as well. So if they're any of my friends north of the border here that are watching do need to be paying attention as we go forward because i am starting to see a few more stout low pressure areas develop as we continue to go forward of course this is after the fourth july holiday that's going to be persistent south of the border this this feature in particular even though we're past 10 days out 
kind of catches my eye a little bit, especially towards the southern parts of Canada as we continue to go forward. Timing is going to be a key element in all of that, but seeing feature after feature like this, it would surprise me that none of them would produce severe weather as we continue to go forward. So that being done now, let's go ahead and take a look at what our moisture returns are going to be like. Looking at our surface dew points, I mean, it's been this way all year. Very few, if any, breaks really in between with this Gulf of Mexico moisture. It's just going about wherever it pleases. Nothing has really inhibited it. No troughs, no troughs of, of any kind or high pressures have really blocked it off at all. And we're just going to continue to see that throughout the entire run. Moisture returns for days. And this is what's going to help keep fueling our severe weather threats as we go forward. Ample amounts of moisture, 50, 60, 70 degree dew points, and in some cases even 80 if you look on the further end of the models here. Look at that. This towards the 9th. This is going to be probably favoring a setup that's a little bit closer towards the northern end of the border. You can even see the 77 degree dew point north of the border, which is crazy. You even see some 80s over here all the way up into Minnesota, North Dakota. And as we continue to go forward, that's going to continue to be a trend here. I do think some of that may have to also do with uh, crop transpiration or corn sweat, as it's called in slang. But in either case, it doesn't really matter. We still have a very notable severe weather threat. And it's even reflected in on some of the models with the Euro here. Looking at the uh, instability here, it's the Mixler Cape weather we're looking at today, where we have ample instability, 3,000 joules of Cape. Or we go into the following day, plenty of instability looks like it's available. I don't think we're going to be getting rid of the severe weather within the next few days for sure. Or really within the next week. Like I said, you can see plenty of instability. To put it in in lamest terms, basically, or give you a rough estimate, about a thousand joules per kilogram is about the threshold. Really, you could even get it at like 500 to 800, but a thousand is usually a good threshold number. And day after day, we see area after area of interest going beyond that by two or even three times. During the summertime, it's pretty common to see these higher numbers due to the amount of instabil due to the amount of daytime heating that we get maximum amount of time maximum amount of um, sunlight introduced into the day heightened dew points with that all you would need is a good lifting mechanism for storms to fire and like I said with the way the weather pattern is we'll see plenty more of that so this cape doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to get a type of severe weather mode but it definitely means that there is a lot of thunderstorm fuel available regardless of where you are so if you get a storm it might have a little bit more bite in it than what you would normally anticipate with a regular garden variety thunderstorm that being said let's go ahead and take a look at our temperatures because this is going to be a big topic as we mentioned before with the gfs previously a lot of ridging going to be going on over here towards the deep south and let's look at how the temperatures correspond with that this over the course of the next few days you can see 90 triple digit temperatures coming into play as we continue to go forward this is only going to increase as we see more ridging occur later into this model run so my concern is that we're all doing what we're supposed to do to keep ourselves hydrated and keep ourselves cool I would avoid trying to spend extended periods of time outside, especially where you're seeing the 110s and maybe even the potential for 120s down the line. But look what happens, especially as we get towards the fourth holiday and beyond here. You can see 90s triple digits really starting to come in here. This is towards my area, by the way. This is on the 6th. You can see 101 degrees. You can see 119. There's 121 right there. You can even see Idaho. Idaho sometimes gets pretty hot, but not this hot. I, like I said, I would expect some record-breaking temperatures over the course of the next couple of weeks here. It's going to be a heat wave that we end up remembering here. And I would want you to stay ahead of it and do what you're supposed to do. No one needs to deal with any sort of heat exhaustion with all the heat advisories, heat warnings, excessive heat warnings, air quality alerts, and more. Let's do what we can to keep ourselves safe and check on each other too while we're at it but as we continue to go on here we're going to look finally at what our precipitation could be like now 
as I said before, with the ridging towards the southeast, we're going to be dealing with a lot of heat. But for some areas, we still may have the chance of a few pop-up thunderstorms here and there. This is pretty typical for the summertime. We're going to continue to see that trend as we go forward here. Towards Florida, we see it, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Then eventually, as that front moves out, we're still going to see those chances kind of lingering for a bit. We may even see some focused action here, maybe through Sunday evening, which is great news for these regions because it's been very dry here. Of course, we're watching our severe weather setups over here. As time goes on here, we even start to see a little bit of business going on over here towards Arizona here. I have had some of you saying that you're anticipating the oncoming uh, monsoon season. Well, there's a good sign for you right there as we go forward. And then as we continue to move on, still seeing the, that persistent summertime setup where we get those big storms. And I said some of these could be a little bit more on the strong side with the amount of instability that we have available due to the increased amount of sunlight, the heat, and moisture available as well. So let's make sure we're make sure make sure we're we're being careful out here towards the deep south in particular as well. Eventually, though, it does look like the weather pattern slows down just a little bit towards the northern states. We still get chances for severe weather, but they're not quite as concrete right now. Of course, we're looking over 300 hours out, so take that with a grain of salt. But it does look like across the board here, we're starting to see more of the classic summertime setup. Still dealing with that heat, but at least at times we may deal with chances of rain, which could help cool us off and maybe stave off some cases of drought but in any case though i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did i appreciate it and make sure you're hitting that like button and hitting that subscribe button to show your appreciation that being said i will see you guys in just a little bit from the time when i upload this video till then take care have an awesome rest of your day if you aren't tuning into the live stream which would be lame I'm just kidding. But in any case, though, hope to see you soon. Take care and have an awesome rest of your day. And again, stay cool.